My desk in Washington, Frank Reynolds. Good evening. Tonight, it appears another nation has joined the nuclear club and has actually exploded a nuclear device. Here is an exclusive report from ABC News diplomatic correspondent John Skelly. United States intelligence has gathered evidence that the South African government has exploded a nuclear bomb within the past month. ABC News has learned that the Carter administration has secretly alerted key allies and congressmen about the development. American spy satellites have detected a low-yield nuclear explosion, they have been told, in an area which seems to point clearly to South Africa as the source. All data is now being urgently reviewed to rule out the unlikely possibility that the mysterious blast was caused by natural phenomena. If, as seems likely, the results are confirmed, it means that the South African government has gone ahead and tested its first nuclear device despite American and Soviet warnings against such action. High-ranking administration officials say they have not discussed the new American evidence with the Soviet government. The initial evidence was brought to the president's attention within hours, authorities say, but they say no 100% confirmation has yet been obtained because American satellites do not monitor events in the southern hemisphere as closely as they watch developments in Russia. John Scali, ABC News, Washington. We informed the Embassy of South Africa here in Washington tonight of our report. A South African spokesman described the report as, quote, mere speculation. He said South Africa has indicated for some time that it has no intention of building a nuclear device, end quote. However, the spokesman acknowledged that South Africa is engaged in a project to, as he put it, enrich uranium. Max? The Chrysler Corporation and the United Auto Workers have come up with an unusual labor agreement. We'll have that story in a minute, as well as a warning from the president to the nation's oil companies. Did they or didn't they? Well, one radiation monitoring authority in New Zealand today said there's evidence the country is receiving a fresh dose of radioactive fallout. Another monitor disputes that claim. But the claim's enough to trigger new suspicion that someone conducted a secret nuclear test recently. Robert Shackney reports from Washington. American officials in a position to know say the discovery of radioactive fallout in New Zealand, if it turns out to be accurately measured, would amount to very strong evidence of a recent nuclear explosion in or near South Africa. They say the fallout discovery would support the theory that a bright flash of light detected by an American satellite last September was in fact the fireball of a nuclear detonation. They say they don't know of any other probable source for the fallout that reached New Zealand. Further, that the kind of fallout reported by New Zealand could only come from an atomic explosion. Officials say it'll take two weeks for U.S. Defense Department experts to confirm the New Zealand findings. And even then, they won't necessarily know who set off the explosion, if in fact there was one. South Africa is suspected of conducting a secret atomic weapons test, but it's also possible that other countries, such as Israel or India, could have been responsible, using the empty stretches of the South Atlantic or Indian Oceans to hide their efforts. Robert Shackney, CBS News, Washington. Metropolitan Edison today said it wants to vent... As a candidate, Ronald Reagan said, I just don't think it's any of our business when asked whether the United States should oppose development of nuclear weapons by foreign countries. He later amended that response by saying he supports nuclear non-proliferation, but sees little chance of success. He may have been right. For almost a year and a half now, there have been persistent reports of one or maybe two secret nuclear tests off the coast of South Africa. Tonight, Robert Pierpoint begins a two-part report on a CBS News investigation into whether there was such nuclear testing and whose it might have been. Bearing the stamp made in Redondo Beach, California, these twin satellites, called Thaler, are now part of a series of satellites in orbit to guard against clandestine nuclear testing in space. For the past 18 years, Vela satellites have circled the Earth in search of secret nuclear tests in the atmosphere and in space. The so-called spy satellites, now in an orbit 60,000 miles above the surface, are equipped with two electronic eyes called bang meters, one more sensitive than the other, which are triggered by any light flash in the field of view. Of 41 known nuclear tests conducted in the past 18 years, the Vela bang meters have spotted them all. 
On the night of September 22, 1979, a Vela spotted two quick flashes of light in the South Atlantic off the South African coast. Once the signal was relayed to an Air Force ground station, the U.S. dispatched reconnaissance planes and ships to search for fallout. None was found, but without a precise location to search in such a remote part of the world, the lack of fallout was not surprising. But the Vela's signal certainly was. It all made a very nice pattern uh, with no obvious inconsistencies. Uh, the only thing that was peculiar about this is where it occurred. It occurred in a strange place. It was not a French or Chinese test, one would think, down in that part of the world. Uh, and, but from a purely technical point of view of what you observed, uh, the light signal, it just looked like it was right in line. This is the signal of a known nuclear event as recorded by the Vela, a double-humped curve characteristic of nuclear blasts. The initial burst of energy, followed by a clouding phase, followed by a gradual release of energy. No signal from any other known source looks quite like it. And this is what the Vela recorded on September 22, 1979. A signal which at first convinced Dr. Ruina and a panel of scientists assembled by the Carter White House that the source was indeed a nuclear explosion. But as their investigation continued, the panel gradually backed off. On careful examination of this slide signal, looking at it very, very carefully and in detail, and comparing what each bang meter saw, you find that one was seeing at one point something a little different than the other was seeing. And that suggests that perhaps the, the, the uh, signal that triggered the bang meters was closer. Because one meter tripped on a microsecond later than the other, and because the signals differed slightly in their intensity, the panel concluded that the source was probably not a nuclear explosion. The panel then suggested that perhaps a tiny meteorite may have struck the spacecraft, broken into pieces, and reflected sunlight into the bang meters one at a time to create a double humped curve. A spokesman for the panel admitted this scenario might occur only once every 10 years. No, we're not enamored of that, of that explanation. We're just saying that seems more appealing than the others we've heard. And of course, the other factor that, that raised the question to start with is that the, there was no corroborative evidence that was very convincing that it was a, uh, a nuclear explosion. But was there corroborative evidence? This is the National Science Foundation's Ionospheric Observatory in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, the largest and most sensitive radio telescope in the world. On the night of the Vela sighting, Dr. Richard Benke, an authority on atmospheric physics, was operating the telescope. He and a colleague, Dr. Lewis Duncan of the Los Alamos Laboratory, were examining the atmospheric effects of an Atlas rocket launched two days earlier. We were changing the direction of the telescope so that we could detect any kind of directional information that, uh, that was available. Everything, uh, everything was working fine and we were getting constant readings for all four nights. After we got our data back, we began analyzing it. And about a week after the event, uh, the computer outputs showed a rather uh, unusual disturbance. The disturbance, Dr. Benke says, was a large gravity wave, a ripple in the ionosphere moving rapidly northward, a direction not generally caused by natural disturbances. We couldn't think of any, any causes offhand. And in fact, kind of jokingly, somebody said that they thought they read in some news magazine something about the, uh, some explosion in uh, the South Atlantic or South Africa. And uh, we looked back to find out when that occurred. And it, it in fact, was that night. We measured the uh, velocity of the disturbance at between 500 and 800 meters per second. If you trace that back, and at the most likely speed of, say, 600 meters per second, four hours and 45 minutes, you get approximately in the area of uh, southern Africa. There are no obvious natural causes for this event. What about an earthquake? Well, no, there were no earthquakes. Uh, we can tell that from other data, and there were no earthquakes at that time. What about a storm? Some people have said there was a tropical storm in the area, but tropical storms do not produce this kind of disturbance. If someone detonated an explosion, would it, pro would it produce somewhere a reading such as you, the one you saw? Well, previous blasts, previous nuclear explosions have caused atmospheric gravity waves. The White House panel aggressively criticized the Arecibo data. 
charging the computations were incomplete or inaccurate, that the technique Arecibo used had not been proven over a long period of time, and that similar gravity waves might occur all the time. The question, how many other interesting signals are there? How many false, how many alarms of the same type exist? And uh, uh, we were, after listening to the Arecibo people and others who analyzed the Arecibo data, as well as our own people who had experience with that kind of data, uh, just was saying, it's interesting, but hardly uh, persuasive. But this, as I understand it, uh, was an unusual uh, reading, vectored, I, or uh, to use... Uh, it wasn't that unusual. Don't make it that unusual. I don't know where he gets his data. It hasn't happened all the time here. This is the only one that I know of that has these characteristics. We've analyzed this data in a, com in a straightforward way, in an accurate way, in a very careful, unbiased way. And I'm sure we got, we, the angle is correct. We've in fact given it to other scientists com who are unbiased and asked them to analyze it for us. And they've come up with the same answers. Obviously there was, not obviously, almost certainly there was a large influx of energy somewhere over South Africa at about the time the Vela satellite uh, saw its flash. As it turned out, Dr. Binky was not alone in his opinion. After all, if his radio telescope heard whatever it was that the Vela saw, other sensors might have heard it too. They did. In the weeks to come, a small but significant group of military, intelligence, and scientific officials would break with the White House and leak their own reports, concluding that the Vela flashes were caused not by some freak accident, but by a secret test of a nuclear bomb. Robert Pierpoint, CBS News, Washington. Tomorrow evening, Pierpoint reports on the intelligence community's explanation for those mysterious flashes, how it differs from the official version, and how other countries may have been involved. The Greeks are developing a bad case of earthquake nerve. The United States abstained on both votes. Last night, a CBS News investigation looked into persistent reports that mysterious flashes of light off the South African coast in late 79 actually may have been a nuclear test. Tonight, in the second part of our report, Robert Pierpoint takes a look at conflicting explanations for those light flashes and who may have been responsible for them. More than 10 months after the U.S. spy satellite called Vela spotted what appeared to be a nuclear blast off the coast of South Africa, a panel of scientists assembled by the Carter White House to investigate the incident concluded that the telltale light flashes may have been caused by a tiny meteorite colliding with the spacecraft and reflecting sunlight into its cameras. While not ruling out a nuclear explosion as the cause, the panel's chairman insisted the meteorite scenario, as improbable as it sounds, made more sense. Well, we're not enamored of that, of that explanation. We're just saying that seems more appealing than the others we've heard. But scientists at the world's largest radio telescope insist there was corroborative evidence. An unusual gravity wave picked up by the telescope on the same night and from the same general direction as the Vela sighting a readout consistent with nuclear explosions. Obviously there was, not obviously, almost certainly there was a large influx of energy somewhere over South Africa at about the time the Vela satellite uh, saw its flash. But Dr. Benke was not the only critic of the White House report. CIA analysts who more than two years ago concluded that South Africa probably has nuclear weapons told select members of Congress that the South African Navy was conducting secret maneuvers in the area on the night of the incident. A Navy equipped with Israeli-made Reshev-class missile boats and Gabriel missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads. Then the Defense Intelligence Agency leaked its own reports, concluding the flash probably came from a nuclear explosion of between one and three kilotons. Shortly after that, another report leaked. This one a secret 300-page analysis by the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory of underwater signals detected at the time of the Vela sighting. The lab's director concluded, the signals were detected at the right times and had the approximate characteristics of a nuclear explosion. The evidence is strong enough to make the case in its own right. It was also learned that the National Technical Information Service, a kind of storehouse of non-classified data open to the public, 
had been filling several subscribers' requests for data concerning detection and countermeasures for nuclear explosions, missile technology, navigation, guidance and control of weapons, and, ironically, data concerning the flight plans, predicted orbit plots, and operations of the Vela satellite. One subscriber was the defense attaché of the South African Embassy in Washington. Whatever the intelligence community has been telling people on the outside, uh, if they have, and I don't know, uh, about what this or isn't is based, I'm sure, on their uh, judgment based on all data. It's not that they've included intelligence data that we don't have. But one would assume that they have access to this, to, they had access to the there same was nothing. There is nothing that we did that they don't know. <laughs> and I think we probably did a more thorough analysis than was ever done before about this event. All right, and, and yes. There's nothing that they know, uh, to my knowledge, and I'm quite sure it's correct, that they have that we don't know. All right, and yet. People can come to different judgments on the same data. And, and apparently have. The, the Central Intelligence have. Agency, Defense no, I, Intelligence I, I Agency. I think I'd be a little careful about that. You better be sure that you're saying the agencies have, not individuals within the agencies. I'm saying analysts within the Central Intelligence Agency. That may be the case. but The, the Defense agency. Intelligence Agency. That may um, be the case. I don't, there are, as I said, different people looking at the same data, I'm sure, can come up with somewhat different judgments. Uh, then get, we're not definitely saying it wasn't, and they're not definitely saying it was. But the question persists. Did the White House withhold information from Dr. Rowena and the panel? On January 21st of this year, London's respected newspaper, The Economist, published an anonymous dispatch labeled confidential in its foreign report newsletter concluding Israel now has as many as 200 nuclear weapons and that the Israelis have indeed been cooperating with South Africa and Taiwan on the developments of missile delivery systems. Information confirmed to CBS News by intelligence sources. The Economist Dispatch goes on to say, Foreign Report believes President Carter withheld intelligence reports about this cooperation from the independent panel of experts. Israel and South Africa have issued routine denials. That was followed weeks later by reports of another unusual incident in the South Atlantic. This one a flash of infrared radiation detected by an early warning satellite last December 15th. A Johannesburg newspaper quoted U.S. intelligence officials as saying it was caused by a nuclear explosion. But the State Department and the Pentagon blamed a meteor. Um, we believe that the event, quote event, was natural and not man-made. The December incident has not caused the White House panel to re-evaluate its conclusion that a meteor probably also caused the September 1979 flash. Dr. Leonard Weiss of the Senate Subcommittee on Nuclear Proliferation told CBS News he was skeptical about that finding six months ago. I'm a little uh, surprised at the zeal with which some people have tried to uh, uh, bring to the question of proving that this was not a nuclear event. Uh, I mean, I certainly there is, a, it does present a if it was a nuclear event, it presents a great political problem for the United States, and uh, and how we deal with it uh, is not would not be the uh, the easiest question to uh, to ask of somebody. And I don't think it is possible to lay to rest this uh, this event uh, with a report that indicates that a group of people uh, feel that the probability of its not being uh, a nuclear event is perhaps greater than half and, uh, and on that basis we all ought to uh, forget about it and, uh, and go to sleep. The Reagan White House plans no further investigation of either incident. Robert Pierpoint, CBS News, Washington. The Polish government today continued its crackdown on dissidents.